Having installed Rx, let's write some code to create an observable and an observer. There are four steps to creating an observable. One, you create the observable. This is a query, just like the I enumerable query. You can even use the link syntax to create an observable query, but here I'm going to use a static method on the observable class called range. This operator creates an observable that will pop back at us the range of integers we specify in its arguments. The two arguments it takes are the starting integer and the number of integers. So if we supply it with the values 5 and 8, it will return to us an observable which will throw back at us the numbers 5 through 12, which are 8 values starting from the integer 5, including the integer 5. Note, however, that when we create an observable using any of the methods we'll discuss later, as in this example, we're creating it using the range method, nothing happens at this time. The observable does not start to throw back values at us at this time. This is just potential energy. The observable starts to throw back values only when we call the subscribe method. At the time we create the observable, we're really simply creating a query, much like we use any of the operators on the I enumerable of T when we create a query. To give you a refresher of how deferred execution works in Link, here is one of my previous videos which I also mentioned in the class. And we even did this example in the class, but this video should help you refresh your memory. As step two, we subscribe to the observable by calling the subscribe method on the observable class. The subscribe method needs an I observer of T implementation. So let's create that first. We'll create a class that implements I observer of T. And since T here is an integer, we'll have to implement I observer of int. We'll write the body of these three methods. These will be called when the observable either has a value to give to the observer, or when it reports the occurrence of an error, or when the sequence is completed and has no more values. Let's say for now that we want simply to print out the, to the console whatever happens. So in the on next, we'll print the value, in on exception, the exception, and in on completed, we'll print to this console that we are done. Note once again that when we call the subscribe method, that the observable starts to throw values at us at this time. In the world of enumerables, this would be equivalent to iterating over a sequence with either a for each loop or by calling the move next in current members yourself. The third step is to provide an implementation for a method that will receive a value when it is available. That is the on next method of the I observer of T class. And we've already done that. But let me just write it over here. And the fourth and final step is when we're no longer interested in receiving any more notifications from the observable, we unsubscribe from it by calling the dispose method on the subscription we received as the return value of the call to the subscribe method. This is an iDisposable object. Now, before I run this code, I want to mention an important bit of detail. Rx is free threaded. Now, this does not mean that it is multi threaded, it simply means two things. One, that you don't have to worry about which thread the on next on error and on completed methods will be called. If you do not specify them explicitly, Rx will take care of it and choose the best implementation that involves the least bit of concurrency. So if the sequence is small and can be run immediately, as, in, as it is in this case, Rx will run it on the same current thread. However, if you want to introduce concurrency for some reason, maybe for performance, uh, then you can explicitly override and specify which thread or synchronization context you'd like to use to run a bit of code. And we'll talk about all this later when we talk more about concurrency and scheduling. For now, since all of this code will be run on the same thread, and we can prove that by writing the thread ID to the console in both the main and the on next, on error and on completed methods, we'll need to somehow stall the current thread so that the flow of control doesn't exit the main function before the observable has had a chance to throw values at us. So I'll write a console.read key here to stall the current thread so you may see the values. Let's run this now.
and we see that we have the results as we expected. Now, in this example, we created an I observer of T implementation by hand. Usually, that's not required. An overload of the subscribe method allows us to pass in just the three lambdas, one each for on next, on error, and on completed, instead of passing a whole observer object. Let's do that next.